Hi, my name is Doss Jones and I'm a master gardener and I used to be a teacher here at John Muir High School. I taught biology and chemistry and biotechnology and I actually graduated from John Muir High School in, oh my goodness, <laughs> a long time ago, 1966, class of 1966. And actually that's part of the reason I'm here. Uh, when I started at Muir, I got interested in going to Africa. I went to P Pasadena City College and transferred to Irvine, got my master's in environmental biology and my teaching credentials. And then I had an, was in an, um, a program where my instructor said, you need to go in the Peace Corps and see the world before you get married and have kids. So I went to Africa for four years uh, Lesotho, and I learned about the world. I learned about world hunger. I learned about um, the ecology of the poor. This is one of the ten poorest countries in the world. And after that experience, I knew I didn't know very much, and I went back to school. I got my master's in public health and nutrition at the University of Hawaii because I wanted to do something about world hunger. Um, my internship from Hawaii was to go to Washington, D.C., where I ended up working for the Department of Agriculture and Food and Nutrition Service. And then, because I thought I was going to go overseas, and then all of a sudden I decided, no, I want to get married and have kids. <laughs> oh dear. So, being a California girl, I came back um, to California and at that time, I had my master's in, in public health and nutrition. I wanted to work in public health and nutrition, but there were no jobs. And so I ended up working for the VA hospital in Sepulveda for 22 years as a dietitian, which was wonderful because there's 172 VAs. And at Sepulveda, I rotated from the psych unit to the surgical unit to the medical unit to the long-term care. But I basically did outpatient nutrition education with diabetes education. I also worked with a lot of AIDS patients, and in my time, unfortunately, most of those patients, my first visit was my last visit with them, and they died. And so after 22 years of teaching veterans, I and I had a lot of students from Cal State LA and Northridge who were becoming dietitians and they were interns with me. And they didn't know anything. <laughs> it was so funny. I had to teach them on the job. And I said, you know, I really need to go dust off that lifetime teaching credential and go back and teach in high school. So I convinced my husband that I could take a cut in pay by half to start over again as a teacher. And I taught for eight years um, and I loved it. Uh, I, think, I think before I retired I kind of got good at it. But what was missing for me was the hands-on experience, the getting the kids jobs. Because if a kid gets a job and sees the relationship between that job and what they're doing in school, all of a sudden they come back to school inspired. They want to learn their math. They, they see the connection. And because I worked in a hospital, I had an outside perspective. And so wh what I did is I hooked up with the city of Pasadena, Pasadena Water and Power, and I got our kids jobs during the summer, internships. And then during the school year, my same students, all of a sudden, they were changed. But we needed some vehicle for hands-on and so I started working with the garden experience because I wanted to teach science through the garden. So we started out with five rows and you know we plant seeds. We did this as a summer program. I had seven students getting their community service because at our school we're wall-to-wall -wall academies. We have engineering and environmental science, which was the academy I worked with, but we also have business and arts, media, and entertainment academies. So in the summer, I had students and we just were kind of playing in the garden trying to figure out what we were um, all about, learning, planting seeds, harvesting, 
and cooking. And that's what, when a kid plants a vegetable and then cooks it, or even eats it raw, all of a the sudden their life changes because there's this connection to food they've never tasted before. Fresh food, food that they, just fresh picked, that they've never had that experience of. And so my, my students all of a sudden became change agents for the rest of the year because we had planted this garden which had enough in it to feed other students that were coming in in the fall who became the basis of my, my two classes this, this past year. They were hooked on the food too. They wanted, to be, they wanted it served in the school lunch program. So we invited the, the head of food service and the head cook over and we cooked for them and they ate our food and the students said, why can't we have this in our school lunch program? And he said, hmm, I don't know. We gotta figure this out. And so that started our dialogue. It started our ability to be able to um, <laughs> to um, have the, our food service director tell us what he wanted us to grow that he could serve online. And this year we were able to serve bok choy and fava beans online in the school. And next year we're going to have more. So six months ago um, I convinced Mud Baron who was one of my master gardener trainers to build a garden on one and a third acres here at John Muir High School so it could be a project-based learning experience for, for the students, for the academies. And so we went from five 50-foot beds to 50. And we are able to grow food and flowers and grow kids who are really excited about what they're learning and how they're applying their engineering skills by doing a water audit and putting in the irrigation, by doing their math skills, by laying out the beds properly, drawing maps. Um, there's so many connections with the gardens. Dissecting plants, soil samples, you name it, we have it the worms, everything is a project-based learning experience, problem solving. These kids, every day, they're learning those higher skills um, out here in the garden, and they love it. They're in love with this place, they love doing it, and it's changing this school. It's changing their nutrition. They, are, they get so much exercise out here to, using their own personal plow and uh, you know the irrigation system they had to use the <laughs> blanking one of the one of those tools one of those tools yes <laughs> lots of those tools um, and they love the fact that their their bodies are feeling better they love the food and it's all about the food it's all about the food and you know they're taking home plants home to make gardens in their own homes. They're bringing their parents out here. We're, we're starting the CSA program where we can pay the kids um, with that. But that brings the farmer's market type of food to the local community here that is in a food desert. And the ripple effect is amazing. So one of the ways that we sell our program, which is really what we're doing here, we cannot compete with the farmers in California, the small farmers, the farmers that go to the market, farmer's market, because we don't have enough land, and we're really teaching. You know, we're, we're teaching. So what we're trying to do is grow kids, grow the community, change eating behaviors, things like that. And so we're, our presence is in the farmer's market as a, using the flowers that we grow and the vegetables that we grow as a way of engaging the public so that they see our students, they see what we're doing. And it, it's, it's community outreach for what, what we are doing and also what can, other schools can do and how we can realize that we have people here in our community that are poor, 
They don't get to eat the fresh fruits and vegetables that are available in the farmer's market because it's too expensive. And so we're trying to bridge that gap somehow and figure out ways that we can bring that food into our fruit food desert here in Pasadena. Most of our students are free and reduced lunch, and we have a possibility with the, the CSA, the Community Supported Agriculture Boxes, to be able to have these, these students and their families use their EBT benefits to buy a box of vegetables once a week. Das, the, the program you have here, is it you think it's replicable in other school districts? That's, we're trying to make everything that we do replicable. That's kind of our bottom line in all of this. And it's the reason I retired, and this is what I'm gonna do the rest of my life, and I do work for free. But my goal is to make these gardens sustainable. And as a teacher, I know that it's very hard to work them into the curriculum, and that's my job for the rest of my life, is to get it into the curriculum so that we can be sustainable, to train teachers, to, pr to, to train uh, PTA people and anyone else in the community that um, can help us to make this work during the school day, after school programs, within the community. And we, we will test those things out. We will train you. You can come here and learn along with us. Um, collaborate because that's what we want. We want this to be replicable in every school district. Excellent. Thank you.